I'm a bit underdressed for today's review. I think I need to do something about it because this one requires a bit of sophistication. Ah, oh, yes, that's much more fitting for today's review because we're looking at the Bowers & Wilkins 705 S2 stand mount, a speaker that is refined, sophisticated and elegant. It's much like James Bond. And it's also much like James Bond in the sense that if you aggravate it, it will kill you. Miss Moneypenny, uh, my drink please. Oh, very nice. Is that for me? Oh, yeah. Thanks, that's, that's great. Okay, anyway, on with the review. The Bowers & Wilkins 705 S2 speaker. A very solidly built, well put together, two-way stand mount speaker with bi-wired or bi-amped terminals on the back which you can use if you should so please. And on the front we have a woofer which has been raised up in the cabinet and it's made of continuum. Yes, continuum, that well-known substance made from unicorn tears, stardust and magic. On top we have a carbon dome based tweeter which has been decoupled from the box. Now altogether this to me looks a little bit like a Dalek from Doctor Who but what we can say even if it lacks beauty it does stand out from the crowd. Now for the sound quality from top to bottom. That decoupled tweeter, well that gives us plenty of air. It gives a verticality to the imaging which is very pleasant indeed. However these are tipped up a little bit in the treble so if your room is reverberant you've got no acoustic panelling and if your amplification is perhaps a lower class D amplifier or indeed some sort of home cinema receiver I probably wouldn't bother because it, on poor recordings you will really find them quite difficult to listen to with good class A or tubes, it softens everything up and does sound very nice to my ears. Onto the mid-range, this for me is the star of the show. It's not quite as good as something like a Harbeth, it's not 10 out of 10, but it is probably an eight and a half. It's very engaging, organic, and draws you into the music with a ton of emotion and feeling. The sound staging of it, well, it's, it's very forward with the vocal. It's not gonna be pushed back into the stage. It's right there in front of you, but I quite like that, and on these speakers, you really do get the feels when someone starts singing, particularly on solo singers or simple tracks. For the low end, it doesn't go too deep. It's down to 50 hertz, but what is there is very good. It is fast and it's punchy. Plenty of gusto and intent driving the music along. Imaging is clear and precise. You can easily pick out instruments within the mix and locate where they are in the sound field. Soundstage, well it is wide, but it's not as wide as other speakers I've heard at this price point. The sound extends probably a foot either side of the speakers themselves. Depth does exist, but you need to listen in midfield or near field to really get it. As you push the speakers back towards the wall, it does flatten the soundstage. All the while though, you do get that enormous sense of verticality in air, which is probably the nicest part of this speaker's imaging and soundstaging, and I really think you will enjoy it in any instance, particularly in a small room. It makes it feel bigger and more entertaining. Okay, if you're at home and you wanna try out a couple of tracks to see if your speakers can do the same thing as these ones, or indeed if you've got these speakers and you just wanna have a little play with them, try these out, because they can be a lot of fun. The first track is Gone by Charlie XCX and Christine and the Queens. First 15 seconds, it gives you everything, from a really punchy mid-bass attack through to some very sparkly, airy sounds, and then a clear vocal in the center. If you wanna know what these speakers are all about, very quickly, listen to the beginning of that song. The second track I draw your attention to is by an artist called Ramin Karimloo. He's actually a West End singer and famed for playing the Phantom of the Opera, amongst other roles in both Broadway and the West End. He sings Empty Chairs and Empty Tables, which is famous from Les Miserables, and this is with a, a guitar and simply his vocal. The guitar has a really nice leading edge, which you get the crispness from the treble, and then that lovely emotive flair from the mid-range, which is very engaging and forward. Definitely give that one a go if you can. So in summary, yes, I'm highly recommending these speakers, but with some caveats. If you simply pop them down in your living room and expect them to sound great, you're kidding yourself. You have to make sure that you manage the hi-fi equipment that you're gonna match with, you've gotta make sure that you don't mind that they're particularly unforgiving of poor recordings, and also that the sound signature is quite forward. If you're sitting there thinking, yeah, okay, no, I, I like all of that, and what I get as a reward is very crisp, 
very high resolution, very airy sound, then great, these are for you. And I think between the one to 2,000 pound bracket, if you've got all of those caveats noted and you're comfortable with them, then go for it because they are exceptionally good. Anyway, if you'd like this video, you like the review, do like and subscribe and we'll see you again back here very soon.